Hello and welcome back to our Excel tutorial series. In today's episode, we will dive deep into the powerful sequence formula and explore how it can be used to generate sequential data effortlessly. Whether you are a beginner or an advanced user, this formula will prove to be an invaluable tool in your Excel arsenal. So let's get started. We will quickly learn to use the sequence formula with all its arguments and then move on to practical examples. As you already know, the sequence formula in Excel allows you to generate a sequence of numbers or dates based on specified parameters. Let's break down its syntax. The first argument, rows, is required and determines the number of rows in the generated array. You can think of it as the height of your data and it is the only mandatory argument in this function. So we can write sequence within brackets 10 and it shall produce a list of numbers starting from 1 to 10. Notice the blue line here. That denotes that it is a dynamic range and that the data here is a result of the first cell. The second argument, columns, is optional and represents the number of columns in the generated array. If not provided, Excel assumes a single column as the default. So this time, we will use the column argument as well and write your formula as sequence within brackets 10, 3. This will generate a series of numbers spanned across 10 rows and 3 columns. Notice the direction of this series is from left to right and then again left to right from the next row. You can change this by using the transpose formula at the start and that will essentially reverse the order. Let me show you how. So as you see, if you are not happy with the array here, you can use transpose to change the order. The third argument, start, is optional and specifies the starting value of the sequence. By default, it begins from 1 if not specified otherwise. So this time, we will write our formula as sequence, 10 for rows, 1 for columns, and 5 for start. Now we have a series of numbers starting from 5 spanning 10 rows. Finally, the fourth argument, step is optional and determines the increment value between each number in the sequence. If not provided, the default value is 1. This time, we shall write our formula as sequence 10, 1, 5, 2, where 2 is the step counter and we have our series in 10 rows starting from 5 with a step counter of 2. So we have 5, 7, 9, 11 and so on. Now let's move to practical examples of this formula. Let's look at this data here, which is from our VStack video. Link is in the description and on the top right, you know, if you want to watch it. So we simply want to add a serial number to this data. I don't know how you do it, but I have been doing it like this for I don't know how long. Let's add a column and name it serial number. What I used to do is enter 1 in the first column, then 2 in the second column, and then select both of them. And bring my cursor at this corner here, and you can see a plus sign. Now I can either drag it all the way to the bottom, or simply double click on it, and it will automatically generate a series of numbers till it finds the first empty cell next to it, which in this case is A42. So Excel is intelligent this way, and we get a serial numbers field easily. This method works fine, but this is a small data set, only 40 items. What if I have hundreds of entries? Don't get me wrong, the method will still work, but the problem comes up when a row is deleted, like this. Now our series is broken. Imagine hundreds of rows and multiple such instances where the row is deleted. You won't be able to even find which serial numbers are missing and you will simply have to create a new series. Let's see if we can fix this by using sequence. Let's create another column so we can compare both methods. We'll enter a simple formula, sequence 40. Press enter and here we have our list. Now let's see what happens when we delete a row. So the row is deleted, but my serial is still there. That's not what we want. So let's fix this. This time we are going to use sequence with count a function we check cells in a range that are not empty. So we are going to write off new formula, sequence, 
count A and for value 1 argument, we are going to select this first name column B2 to B41. So now number of rows where we want a sequence formula to generate a number depends on if this column is empty or not. Let's see. Here we have our series and now let's delete a row. And we have our serial numbers automatically update if a row is deleted. But what if we have to add a row? Now let's add a row. Notice a serial number is not updated and at the end we have one row without a serial number. That's because the count A function we used found this empty column and did its job. The moment we enter the data in this column like this, it should be fixed. Let's check and here we have it updated. Let's say we have a job to create an attendance sheet of a small company on Excel. The way this company marks attendance is simple. In this Excel sheet here, they mention the date on the top here and then against each employee, if that employee is present, one is entered and if not, zero is entered. This way, they can calculate the total number of days worked at the end of the month by simply adding the total number of days. Here. Well, they are doing something wrong with so many employees taking so many days off. But moving on. So every month, we have to create this sheet and if we are doing it with the dragging method or manually punching the dates in, God help us. Instead, we are going to copy this sheet over like so and make a sheet for the upcoming month of August 2023. Let's delete all the attendance data for June from here and clear out all the dates at the top. And now we write our formula. We will use date function for this. The syntax for date is date, year, comma month, comma day. So if we have to write a date, say July 1, 2023, we will write our formula as date within brackets 2023 comma 7 comma 1. This will give us 1723. Please note that as per my system's date format, you might find it confusing where you are. It's actually date, month and year format. So we use this date formula and generate a sequential list of all the dates in the month of August. Our formula will be Transpose, because we want the dates in a row and not columns, date 2023, comma 8, comma sequence, within brackets, 31. 31 because August has 31 days and even if you make it more than this, Excel is smart enough to realize that there is no 32nd or 33rd of August, so it will make it 1st of September and so on and so forth. So now we have our attendance sheet ready and every month we simply have to copy this sheet and change the month here and let Excel do the rest. As we explained during the syntax part of this video, sequence can also be used to generate an array. There are various uses for this but let's look at the one that you might come across with creating a calendar. For this purpose, we shall also use weekday function in Excel. We haven't covered this function in our videos yet. So let's give you a quick explanation on weekday. Weekday function by default simply gives you a number for a given date. And this number corresponds to a day of the week. For example, let's have a look here. We have August 1, 2023 as the date and we have to use weekday function here. It gives us 3 which corresponds to Tuesday. So let's check our calendar here and lo and behold, it is a Tuesday. That is all we have to know for this video. If you want a video about weekday and other date functions, write it down in the comments and we shall make one. Now back to our task at hand, creating a calendar. What we want to do is create a calendar that starts from Sunday and ends on Saturday and we will make it dynamic. Meaning whenever you open the sheet, it will show you dates ahead. For this, we will use the today function which simply gives you the date today. We can mention that here and now let's get back to our sequence formula. So we write our formula as sequence 6 which is the number of rows, 7 that's number of days in a week and a number of columns, 
then let's reference to the today formula here minus weekday reference to our today column again double closing brackets plus one and closing bracket now we format this as dates and here we have a calendar that changes with today's date if you want a fixed one just enter any date here and the calendar shall change accordingly and with that we get to the end of our video hopefully you have now understood what is sequence formula and how to effectively use it don't be afraid to try different variations of it i can give you examples from my perspective but you have to use it to make it work for you because by harnessing the power of this formula you can generate sequential data efficiently and save time in your excel task thank you for joining us today remember to practice using the sequence formula in excel to become more proficient with its application stay tuned for more exciting excel tutorials and you know like share and subscribe until then happy spreadsheeting